I sold our vacuum cleaner. It was just gathering dust. Today, I'm going to recap a 2009 action fantasy film called Avatar. In 2154, the Resources Development Administration, aka RDA, recruits Jake Sully, a paraplegic and former Marine. His twin brother Tom, who worked for the RDA, was killed, and now they need Jake as his replacement for the Avatar program on a planet called Pandora, because as his twin and his genome is the only one that can activate Tom's Avatar. Jake agrees and is put in a cryo sleep chamber, where he sleeps for almost six years as the crew travels to the planet. When Jake arrives, he meets the head and team of the Avatar program, Dr. Grace Augustine and Dr. Norm Spellman, who was also a friend of Tom. He learns that Pandora's atmosphere is poisonous to humans, and its land is ruled by a species called the Navy 10-foot-tall blue-skinned humanoids. The Navy worship the mother nature goddess Awa. In order to explore the land, humans temporarily transfer their consciousness to avatars. A human navy hybrid that humans have created and can only be activated by its own biological owner. Jake and Norm enter their avatar bodies for the first time, and Jake feels ecstatic to be able to walk and run for the first time in years. He then meets Trudy, a combat pilot assigned to the avatar team, who introduces him to the Colonel Miles Quaritch. Colonel Quaritch comes up with a deal for Jake. He will join the avatar team on their expeditions, but he will report everything he knows about the Navi and their home tree, which is sitting on the largest supply of unobtainium in Pandora. The RDA is mining this mineral to take back and sell on Earth. In turn, the Colonel will make sure that the company funds the replacement for Jake's legs. Jake agrees. He joins Grace and Norm as their escort on their research expedition. While the scientists search for samples, a vicious beast called the Thanador attacks Jake, tearing him away from the group. He barely escapes with his life and is soon left in a jungle struggling to survive, until a female navy named Nitari saves him. Nitari feels a strong attraction to Jake's brave heart, but thinks he is too stupid and naive. Seeds from the spirit tree land on Jake, and Nitari takes this as a sign to take him to her clan, the Omathakaya. He is met with hostility, especially from Sute, the heir to the chieftain ship and Nitiri's fiance. Jake meets the clan's chief and priestess Echukin and Moet, who also happen to be Nitiri's parents. After much deliberation, Moet decides to take in Jake and have Nitiri teach him their ways of life. Jake settles in for the night with the clan, and he is instantly brought back to the Avatar Stimulator. He reports everything he's learned to Grace as well as to Colonel Quaritch. The colonel gives Jake three months to convince the Navy to move, or else they will be bombing their home tree. Grace grows suspicious of Jake's dealings with the colonel, so she transfers the team to a remote outpost at the floating mountains of Pandora. Over the next three months, Nitiri teaches Jake the ways of the Navi. She tells Jake that once he is ready, he will have to choose his own Ikran, a winged beast the Navis used to hunt, and he will finally become a warrior. Jake learns to track and hunt the wildlife, and also begins to understand the spiritual connection between all the beings in Pandora. Soon enough, Jake grows sympathetic with the Navi and starts falling in love with Nitiri. Once he gets his first clean kill, he, Nitiri, Sute, and other Navi go to the floating mountains to get their own Ikran. They reach the Ikran's nest, and Sute orders Jake to choose first. In order to choose one, the Ikran must choose him first by trying to kill him. He manages to take down one of the beast and bonds with it through the nerve endings on his hair. Nitiri pushes them off the cliff, forcing Jake to fly with his Ikran to solidify the bond. As they're flying their Ikran, Jake and Nitiri face an almost ill-fated encounter with the Toruk, a mighty dragon-like beast that the Navis fear and worship. Only five Navis in history have been able to tame and ride the Toruk, including Nitiri's great-grandfather. The three months come to an end, and the team goes back to the facility. Colonel Quaritch gives Jake the ultimatum, but he asks the colonel for an extension just until his final ceremony is over. And then he becomes one of them, and he can convince them to relocate. The day of the ceremony arrives, and Jake is finally accepted into the Omathakea clan. Now that he is one of them, Nitiri takes Jake into the Tree of Souls. 
The Tree of Souls is one of the Nevi's most sacred places, where the memories of their ancestors are stored. They can access these memories by tying their nerve endings to the fibers of the tree. It is also one of the places with the most unobtainium deposits. Nitiri tells Jake that he can now choose a wife. He then proposes to Nitiri, who happily accepts. Under the Tree of Souls, the two kiss and connect their nerve endings, binding themselves to each other for the rest of their lives in the eyes of their goddess Aiwa. As morning breaks, Nitiri is awakened by the sounds of a large machine. A bulldozer has come from the RDA, tearing up the Tree of Souls. Nitiri tries to wake Jake, but he is currently out of the stimulation and remains unconscious by the time Jake wakes up. He sees a frantic Nitiri dragging him away. He signals the bulldozer to stop, but it continues on plowing. He then climbs the machine and starts destroying the cameras, but the crew starts shooting at him. They run away with Nitiri sobbing, as she watches the machines tore down their sacred place. Meanwhile, the RDA catches the footage of Jake destroying the cameras, and is able to identify him. Jake and Nitiri make it back to the home tree, where he tries to persuade Aitukin to relocate for the safety of the clan. Sute attacks Jake, accusing him of mating with his betrothed. Nitiri admits to this, and says it cannot be undone, as they are now bonded before Aiwa. At their outpost, Norm tries to stop the soldiers as they pull Jake and Grace from the simulators, but it's too late. Jake takes the opportunity to state his final plea, but he and Grace faint before he can say anything. They are brought back to the facility, and Jake's true allegiance is revealed through a video log, stating that the Navis will never give up their home. Colonel Qua Rich decides to pull the plug and bomb the Navis away from the home tree. Grace then tells the company that they can't destroy the home tree because it will destroy the biological neural network native to Pandora. The synapses connecting all of them together like one enormous brain. The RDA isn't fully convinced, but agrees to give the team one hour to convince the Omathakaya to move. Grace and Jake regain consciousness in their avatar forms, and Jake starts telling them about the RDA's plans. He then admits that he was sent there as a spy, but now things have changed. Hurt by his betrayal, Nitiri lashes out at him and leaves. Jake and Grace are then taken captive. The RDA sends hovercrafts to the home tree and starts gassing them out. Refusing to run, the Omathakea fights back, but their arrows are useless against the heavy steel of the crafts. The hovercrafts then fire the missiles at the natives and at the home tree. The tree immediately lights up on fire as the Navis make a run for their lives. Jack and Grace are tied to their post, unable to escape until Mode approaches them. She sets them free, telling them that if they are indeed one of them, then they should help them. The firing continues at the home tree's roots, causing the trunk to finally break. The home tree topples over and kills a hundred Navis by crushing them on the ground. Nitiri searches for survivors and finds her father with a shard to his chest. With his dying breath, he bestows upon her his bow and arrows and makes her promise to fulfill her duties. Jakes finds her in the rubble, but Nitiri pushes him away, telling him to never come back. Back at the facility, Jake and Grace are taken out of the simulation once again and are arrested while Jake's avatar body collapses among the debris. As the avatar team lay in their cell, Trudy busts them out. They hijack one of the helicopters and escape, Unluckily, Grace takes a hit to the stomach. Jake patches her up as they make it back to their original outpost. They relocated higher up the mountains where the RDA can't get to it easily. Jake gets back into simulation and formulates a plan. Once he's back in his avatar form, he calls out his Ekron. Jake knows that there's only one way the Omathakea will listen to him. Together, they hunt down the Toruk. With nowhere else left to go, the Omathakea are forced to take refuge at the last remaining Tree of Souls. As they wait for an answer to their prayers, they hear a strong gust of wind behind them and gasp in horror as they see the Toruk flying towards them. It lands on the ground, and Nitiri is shocked to see that Jake has managed to tame the mighty beast. This feat gains the awe and respect of the Navi. Jake asks Sute to join him in the fight against the humans, and he agrees. Jake then brings Grace to the Navi, asking them to save her life. He takes her human body to the Tree of Souls, together with her avatar body, and the clan performs a ritual to try and transfer Grace's consciousness into her avatar form. 
But it was too late, Grace's wound was too deep, and she died before the ritual was over. But Jake knows that the battle is far from over. Together with Sute, they rally up the Omathakaya. They then travel to neighboring clans, gathering Navis from the plains, seas, and mountains to join them in the battle for their homes. By the end of the day, they manage to gather over 2,000 Navis at the Tree of Souls. Through intel, Jake learns the RDA's plans to bomb the Tree of Souls. He then forms a plan to lure them through the floating mountains, and then attack them there, even before they reach the sacred place. Jake prays to Iowa at the Tree of Souls for guidance. As morning breaks, the RDA launches the hovercrafts along with the bombs. The Navi clans wait for them among the floating mountains. Not long after, the clans from the plains take action in charge of the machine suit surveying the grounds. The Navis take the first fire, flying around the hovercrafts and shooting them down with their arrows. They manage to take down a few helicopters, but the company's armory is too strong. They launch fires at the Navis with their guns, taking down quite a number of them. Colonel Quaritch spots Jake on the Toruk and starts firing at him. Jake escapes the line of fire, luring the colonel's hovercraft deeper into the mountains. Suddenly, Trudy and her helicopter intervenes. She shoots fire at the colonel, allowing Jake to escape. Meanwhile, Nitiri's icon is taken down, and she lands on the ground witnessing the devastation that the humans have caused. Sute launches a heroic act at the main hovercraft, taking away a number of men, unloading the bombs before he is gunned down and falls back to the ground. The Navis are overwhelmed as they retreat deeper into the forest. Suddenly, the hovercrafts pick up a different movement. In a matter of seconds, various Pandorian wildlife come charging at the machines as the Ekran overtakes the skies, taking down the remaining crafts. Nitiri interprets this as a sign of help from Aiwa. Jafe then lands on the main hovercraft, carrying the bombs and takes down their machine guns. He runs around the craft, expertly avoiding fire and launches a grenade at one of the engines. The craft goes down and blows up among the mountains. He launches several more grenades at the colonel's craft, but Quamrich manages to escape using a mechanical suit. The grenades blow up, and Jake is tossed back into the sky and lands back to the ground. The colonel survives the blow and starts hunting down the outpost. Quaritch reaches the location of the simulators just in time as Nitiri makes a launch at him. Quaritch takes her down and traps her beneath the trunks of a tree. As he's about to stab her, Jake appears and fights him. Jake is able to hold him off, breaking his knife and the protective glass around the suit. The colonel gasps for air and then starts targeting Jake's real body instead. He breaks open the glass of the outpost and destroys the simulators. Jake stabs him on the neck as the colonel drags his body. Nitiri frees herself and launches an arrow straight to the colonel's heart. She launches another arrow to finish the kill. Meanwhile, Jake emerges from the simulator, dragging his body to reach for the air mask. The poisonous air knocks him out and he's unable to breathe, Nitiri realizes what's happening, and she climbs inside the outpost and puts the air mask on Jake. She sees his real body for the first time, and they hold each other close. Back in his avatar form, Jake and Nitiri find Sute, who begs Jake to kill him off, so that he would die a noble death. As he takes his last breaths, Sute acknowledges Jake as his brother and passes the chieftainship to him. Jake accepts this with gratitude. The war is now over and the Navis have won. The facility is destroyed and the humans are sent back on their ships to Earth. Jake, Norm, and a few other humans are given permission by the Navis to stay. Jake is now crowned as the new chief of the Omathakea clan. On his new birthday, he is taken to the Tree of Souls with Natirid, where they perform a ritual, transferring his consciousness to his new avatar body. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.